I have found my new favorite model and it's probably not what you think it is. Just look at these results here. Now it's no secret that one of my favorite models for a very long time have been the Juggernaut variants, but this isn't it and it has been trained further than Juggernaut and has more input images. In my opinion, it's even better. You know, I always strive to get the best realistic images as possible. I mean, a lot of the models can do pretty colorful, vibrant art, especially if you prompt for that. I think the hardest part is realism and we're getting one step closer. Oh, and I know a bunch of jokes about umbrellas, but uh, they usually go over people's heads. AI. These look very nice and i'm also looking at especially here these two are the most close up and if you look at the skin i would never guessed that this was an ai generated image now this is a think diffusion xl and it was uploaded today but uh, i have had access to this for quite some time so i've been testing it thoroughly now they did send it to me a couple of weeks back so i've been playing with it and full disclosure they have been paying me and sponsoring my videos but this video in particular is not sponsored i actually think that this model is a very good model so there are some comparisons it says the training and images used are over 10,000. They are all hand captioned. Each image has been tagged by hand to um, what actually helps us with, with the prompting. So if the tagging is done correctly, the model will train on those keywords. And once we prompt for that, it's going to remember the training data and so forth and so forth. So the human tagging kind of takes away the possible errors that the computer tagging has the potential to do. So over 10,000 training images, this average model here or others, 1,000 to 2,000 and training steps, 1.8 million versus uh, roughly 250,000 for, for the average model. And here are some comparisons, easy prompting, Trained for all art styles and realism, 4K data set, which is kind of cool. Most models are trained by, especially SDXL, 1024 by 1024. This has also a 4K data set. Now it says here, average model does not have some of these things. Some models actually do. So it's not that TDXL only has this, but uh, like they say, it's the average model here that doesn't trained on uncensored or not safe for work images, human tag training data, we talked about that. And then the rest is, you know, every model has it, the 1024 data set, standard on no refiner needed. Well, average model, everyone except like the base SDXL, which requires a refiner. Well, we're gonna look at what it actually can do. So I've loaded up Ruin Focus now, which uh, I've been using a lot, especially to get out just, you know, simple, good looking images for uh, more advanced features. I'm probably going to venture into automatic 1111, but uh, I love focus for its simplicity. Let's put in woman close up portrait in cyberpunk scene raining neon lights. Let's do let's do sunglasses, sunglasses at night, like all the cool people do. Well, I didn't put in night actually. But we have, I just had a picture in my mind of, of it being night with, with the neon lights and everything. So we'll see if it's going to be night or daytime. And I'm thinking here that I'm not going to cherry pick the images for you. I'm just going to generate and um, you'll see what we get. I think that that's going to be a fair way to show show the model. I will, however, speed up the, the renders for uh, all your convenience, really. See here we have some cool looking examples. I think this turned out pretty well. This one's kind of cool too, maybe a little much too pink in the glasses. This one wasn't great, so well, uh, two-ish turned out well out of those. I'm really happy with this one actually. Even the glasses are kind of symmetric and everything. Let's try, let's change here. Alien warrior close-up portraits in sci-fi scene. Beautiful exotic alien world landscape. Battle scars face paintings. I have no idea what this will get us. I haven't done a lot of like alien creatures, stuff like that. I mostly, mostly do humans. Let's see, uh, see what happens. We're at least looking to get some kind of humanoid here. Not a lot of face paintings in the first one. I am using a cinematic style here. So if you prompt for cinematic, you are going to get like a more desaturated look, which is more prevalent in, in film. 
Uh, you might get some film grain prompt for that as well. So I know that uh, we can look at some comparisons later, but, but I know that when I did some comparisons and when, when I prompted, uh, one of my usual styles is cinematic and trying to get some film is at first glance, it might look like the images are desaturated in comparisons. It actually looks more realistic, which is something that I like. Uh, it looks uh, looks a little bit more color graded, which would be uh, well similar to, to high production film. So it didn't understand the scars of the face paintings. We might want to wait that up a little bit. But I, I think in general, the, the character here looks very nice. It's this could be something out of a, out of a movie. Maybe we can try and move that battle scars, face paintings, put that in, in the front. Let's weight that up a little bit. Let's also put in colorful, vibrant alien world landscape. Now, if you are using automatic 1111 and want similar styles, I have a lot of these styles implemented also in automatic 1111. The link for those styles are going to be in the, the description below when you have a cinematic style of the styles that are, are fantastic to use and they are all free. Just check out the link below. I think these look cool. We didn't get the colors or, or the paints paintings that we were prompting for. But I think the style here is kind of overriding that. So I'm going to just drop that out and I'm going to generate again and see if we can. Uh, and yeah, you can see straight away once we drop that cinematic style that we are getting some more color in, in these images. So, so bear in mind that, that um, instead of trying to weight up and down too much, you might just want to, you know, drop some words in your prompts, try to make them, them easier or shorter. And I've tried some very short prompts and uh, it works actually quite well. And, and as you can see in this one, now this is all the, the only prompt we have. We have battle scars, face paintings, alien warrior, etc. And the images are still looking very nice. And as you can see here on, on models, we are using Think Diffusion only. There is no refiner and there is no LoRa attached to this. So this is straight out of the box. And uh, straight away, I feel this is much better than the cinematic aliens we had previously because uh, we were actually prompting for the color and kind of the face painting here. Wow, this is kind of nice. Even the eyes turned out well. And that's something I actually read about. So we can try that. Let's try woman close up portrait and let's just do blue eyes because I read if you actually prompt for specific eyes instead of getting the, the usual SDXL eyes it's gonna use the um, train data set for eyes and, and you will get well, better eyes instead of the usual like marble like eyes that kind of look messed up so let's see if it can uh, deliver on, on that here I think the first set of eyes here look pretty good we're gonna look at the, the pupils a little soon I am noticing that um, well, for blue eyes in particular, it's very, it's very clear blue. So you could try like light blue, aquamarine, or some sort of other type of blue if you don't want them to be so prevalent in your image. And if you are getting images that look very similar to each other, you can look at your clip skip value and uh, play a little with that. So I think um, these look very nice and i'm also looking at especially here these two are the most close up and if you look at the skin i would never have guessed that this was an ai generated image you can even see here some of the hair is coming from around the mouth here looks looks very nice looks very realistic oh i'm happy with this this looks nice so let's try something else let's try fantasy warrior in epic battle let's add in flowing magic light maybe blue, purple, teal, red. I'm gonna drop in a digital art style selection here. We are gonna generate four new images. And again, I'm not sure picking any images here. Now the, the first alien ones, well, they were okay, but we should have dropped the cinematic vibe earlier. But let's see what we get here from our flowing magic light of the fantasy warrior in epic battle. So the first one here, we got some kind of uh, guy in armor holding a, well, it's not a spear. I was gonna say like sort of a scythe, but then it kind of stops here. The second one has a, a sword and a dagger, but I love the, the lights that we are getting here. So I wanted this contrast from the blue, purple, tealish to, to the red. And we are getting that so far in, in two of the images at least. The third one seems to be getting that as well. And we might be getting a sort of a blue magic spear here. 
So that's kind of cool. So now we have a more painterly vibe. This isn't, the, this isn't the realism that we had before. This face maybe needs a little bit of in-painting. I mean, it's okay from afar. The hands we missed a little bit, but I think the rest of the image, the, the vibe here is fantastic. And this looks pretty cool as well. You can have some depth here with the background. Now, what I would do if I wanted to um, improve on something like this is I would take it, um, send it into automatic 11.11, I would in-paint details to, to add some detail to the character, the face, maybe some of the armor that would really make uh, the image pop a little bit, as the cool kids say. Let's take one of the other prompts here. Let's take this one here. Let's just copy that. We're going to remove everything. going to slap that in and the negative. So now we're creating a cinematic film still portrait of a Viking warrior man with face paintings and blood. Actually, this has, let's stop this. This has detailed eyes. Let's go for um, to green eyes this time. Oh, it's not stopping. I might need to restart this. Okay, so we have restarted and I am generating again this Viking warrior with green eyes. Now this time we have uh, not selected a style here. We just uh, copy pasted from Civit AI. Civit AI? Civit AI? What do you say? Let me know in the comments below. I'm, I'm truly curious. Everyone pronounces it differently. As you can notice now, we are getting, uh, like we talked about, a more desaturated look because we have a cinematic film still here and even CinemaScope. So that will truly affect the end result of your image. Uh, but, but that's something I prefer because you can easily raise the saturation in um, my preferences is Photoshop. Uh, but every, if everything is, is too much, it's hard to you know get it back. It's similar to like filming and in, in log stuff like that. So here we have some uh, cool looking images of the Viking warrior with green eyes. Yeah, I think these are fairly okay. Really nice actually. I like this intense stare that's going on. Let's try and remove the cinematic film. Still kind of just do HDR vibrant color, high contrast, close-up portraits. Let's remove CinemaScope and Moody. Let's see what else is here. Highly detailed, high budget. Let's remove the Hollywood film. There we go. And we're doing the same thing with um, a little more pop to the image, I hope. So let's look at these. We are getting some more color. I think in general, I, I might have been taking it a little too far. I would probably have liked to have seen these with, you know, less, less saturation. I think they're a little too much now. I am going to keep using this because, you know, I like it very lot. It's going to be a good base model for me. Let me know what you think or what your preference is. I think my preference previously has been Juggernaut. Uh, I like that a lot. I've also been using realistic stock photos, um, especially just for basic images. So th th those have been my, my go-to models. If you try this out, let me know what you think. If you uh, have another model that you think is better that I haven't tried, let me know. I'll, I'll check it out. That I did note while um, I did some tests of my own, but I think this was kind of good kind of showcase here because we have this image here on, this is from the Think Diffusion's own page and they have a comparison between some of the models, which uh, has Juggernaut and realistic stock photo here. There's also Dream Shaper and the Excel base. And you can clearly see that Think Diffusion is less desaturated, less glossy than the other ones. And here in the text it says, uh, TDXL provides a very realistic experience without any, without an overly saturated plastic feel, which is prevalent in, for example, the SDXL base model. The colors are inherently more muted for realism, but can still be prompted to provide high contrast, vibrant colored images. Or using prompt word cinematic, you will truly get a more cinematic vibe to your images. An, ex is a th an exquisite world of color graded film. So that's what I've been trying and playing with. And I, I think if you prefer that cinematic, more realistic style, you will enjoy Think Diffusion. As always, have a good one. See ya!